For the longest time, Rhodesians exposed Africans to various forms of abuse. As the whites continued to make the blacks suffer, the spirit of the land gave birth to the desire for independence amongst the Africans. However, the Rhodesians were arrogant because they believed they had a well-trained army and no one would dare challenge them. Every villager would be under 24-hour surveillance and no one was allowed to leave the keep without the knowledge of the authorities. The Rhodesian soldiers manning these keeps were very cruel and drew pleasure from taunting and torturing African villagers. Sometimes they became complacent and it is during this time that the spirit of the liberation was ignited and took flight. Though the Rhodesian security forces were diligently monitoring all possible entry points, the freedom fighters entered the country under cover of darkness by canoe and on foot. Freedom fighters were well organized and had maps and operational diagrams to effectively execute the liberation struggle. Sometimes the freedom fighters had to employ different covert strategies. One of these strategies was the use of service delivery vehicles which passed easily on all security checkpoints. As they moved further into the contested areas, the freedom fighters announced their presence by carrying out successful military operations. As the message for the liberation go to all the Africans of Zimbabwe, everyone became involved in the struggle for total independence. African business people such as shopkeepers supported the freedom fighters with food, clothes and other key items to fight the war. The young boys or Mujibas were sometimes sold out and were intercepted and arrested by the Rhodesian security forces. These young men were interrogated and tortured to sell out the struggle, including being whipped in public, but they remained resolute. The Rhodesian security forces would continue to take turns to abuse and torture these young men in jail cells. As the fire of the liberation struggle grew, women and young girls hearkened to the call of freedom and became part of the war effort. Sometimes, these women were sold out by Rhodesian spies. They would brave abuse and torture while carrying food to the freedom fighters. As the freedom fighters entered the occupied contested zones, they would gather the masses to orient them this orientation included introductions, slogans, as well as various codes to be used to outwit the enemy. Because of the terror the masses were exposed to, the villagers sometimes needed cheering up. The freedom fighters would boost the masses' morale through freedom songs and dance. Among the villagers would also be found sellouts who spied on behalf of the Rhodesian soldiers. This is how freedom fighters like Comrade Chiremba and Comrade Kabarano Cheka were betrayed in exchange for canned beef. Because the freedom fighters had mastered guerrilla warfare, they became difficult to capture. The Rhodesians were forced to offer prizes to the public for providing information on the location of the liberation fighters. This is how our unsung hero, Comrade Chiremba, was injured and captured. On that fateful day, the omen and embodiment of the liberation struggle, the ego, flew above Comrade Chiremba and Comrade Kabarinocheka. Instantly, the comrades understood the warning of danger and took cover in thorny bushes. However, the Rhodesians had deployed spotter planes. As the spotter plane hovered above the comrades, they knew that their position had been compromised. As Comrade Jiremba and Comrade Gabarino Cheka were running, Comrade Gabarino Cheka got pierced in the foot by a huge sharp thorn. 
comrade Chiremba turned back to go assist his comrade in arms. At that point, the two comrades did not know that the enemy had also deployed snipers. And just as comrade Chiremba was assessing comrade Gabarino Chika's injury, he was shot in the leg by a sniper bullet and fell. Comrade Gabarino Chika gathered all his wits and courage and carried his head comrade in arms. The Rhodesian soldiers deployed sniffer dogs to check the two comrades as they had surrounded them from all directions. Unfortunately, Comrade Chiremba is captured by the Rhodesian forces and is heavily brutalized. They took Comrade Chiremba and strung him upside down while dangling on a rope from a helicopter. They flew him over villages, celebrating their capture of a terrorist and warning the villagers that if they help the comrades, they would suffer a similar fate. They later dumped Comrade Chiremba's body in between two boulders on a mountain peak where no one would be able to retrieve his body to give him a decent burial. The Rhodesian forces rounded up all the villagers who had helped Comrade Chiremba. They locked them in a single hut and burnt them alive. As these atrocities happened, the other liberation fighters were watching but could not engage the enemy because they were outnumbered. The comrades knew that the sacrifice would be avenged in equal measure. Somewhere near the village, Comrade Gabarino Cheka was in deep sleep due to fatigue and pain. As he was sleeping, it started to rain. Comrade Gabarino Cheka dreamt of a peaceful, beautiful Zimbabwe. He woke up and gathered his resolve and vowed to soldier on till Zimbabwe is free. The spirit of the liberation struggle had landed. Aluta continued.